About eight years ago in 2014, I moved to Colorado Springs shortly after they legalized recreational cannabis sales, and they had already had medical sales there for several years. So they had a pretty established market, and my goal was to move there and get a job, start working in the industry, and learn everything I can about the wonderful plant that we all know and love. But I learned firsthand that working in the cannabis industry wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. And I'm making this video to see if I can help open up some people's eyes to what it's really like. I get asked about working in the cannabis industry a lot. People ask me on my Twitch streams and my Instagram DMs because I've mentioned in a few of my videos. I get a lot of questions, but for the most part, I haven't worked in a dispensary or a grow or anything like that for a few years, but I did end up working in a few places in Colorado Springs medical shops. I've shopped at a lot of places, and I've also talked to a lot of different bud tenders, growers, extractors, people in the industry, so I've got their takes on it. And a lot of people like myself weren't the biggest fans of working in the industry. First off, it's a job. It's any job. You got to do work, right? No matter what your job is, if you're a bud tender, if you're a grower, a manager, it's a job. You're not just smoking weed all day, right? That's what a lot of people think it is. A lot of people think every time the customers leave the dispensary, all the bud tenders go in the back and light up. And most places, they don't allow you to smoke in the dispensary. They tell you not to go smoke on your lunch break. A lot of places understand that you're going to do it, but they still have to tell you not to do it on their premises or nearby for legal reasons and stuff like that. So it's not all just hanging out and having a good time. It's a job. So one of the first things I learned, and this is true in a lot of states, but it's not the case in every state. In Colorado, you need what's called a med badge to work in a dispensary. It's the Marijuana Enforcement Division badge, I believe. And you basically got to pay like $100 a year or something like that to get a license that allows you to work in a dispensary. You got to renew it every year or whatever. Some states require you to have a license to work in the dispensary. Some places will just hire you off on the street and they don't have that requirement. But it's another way for the state to make money off of you, essentially. I think I had to go in give them my fingerprints, fill out an application, and then wait a week and I got approved. Because shortly after I moved to Colorado Springs, I'd go into dispensaries after I got my medical card. And most places would reply immediately, do you have your med badge? If you have your med badge, I can take your resume. So you can't even just go get a job unless you have a badge. So I did all the paperwork, took me a couple weeks, I got a badge and I started applying at places. And honestly, going into my first job interview at a dispensary, I thought it was going to be a little bit different than it was. I thought I was going to have to express my cannabis knowledge, demonstrate demonstrate that I knew about extracts and edibles and that there was a difference in highs and things like that. I thought I had to really demonstrate knowledge. Most places just want to make sure that you know how to use the cash register. They just want to make sure that you can ring it up. The most common job in a dispensary, probably like 70, 80% of the people that work in the industry work as a bud tender just selling stuff. But you're really just ringing it up. You're a glorified cashier in most places. Some customers come in, they have no idea what they want. They don't know anything about strains. They got these weird misconceptions. They're like, I need a good beginner strain. I need to try something out for a first time smoker. I, people got weird questions when they come in just because they haven't smoked or done any experimentation yet. So for some people, you're upselling, suggestive selling. You're trying to make sure they get a little bit more out the door before they leave. But most dispensary customers know exactly what they want before they go in. They have exactly $72 and they know if they get a pack of gummies, an eighth and a pre-roll, they'll have enough change left over to go get a blunt wrap from 7-Eleven on their way home. You're not doing any any work on that. You're not doing any sales that you're just ringing it up. Most customers at most dispensaries, you're just ringing it up. You scan it into the system, making sure they're not buying too much. You're not doing anything crazy. So in a lot of cases, you just got to be able to count the cash, give people the correct change. There's a lot of bud tenders out there that just have no knowledge. They don't know how things are extracted. They don't know much about genetics. They really just know how to use the cash register. That's not a bad thing. I don't think that the bud tender should be the most educated person. Some people think, that bud tenders are like scientists and they're the ones that are going to hand pick out the strains for you. A lot of bud tenders in my experience don't even smoke that much weed. I worked at a few places. Every time we had like a work party or whatever, all the bud tenders I work with just smoke blunts. They'd all get in a circle and pass around the same blunt. I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't want to smoke with them. I want to get high. Where are the dabs at? Where are the bong rips at? Now, not every place is the same. Some places are big corporate businesses and a lot of people in the grow do some of the in-house work that bud tenders might. But I worked in a small shop and we rolled our own pre-rolls in the dispensary. We would take out all the jars and then get all the shake out of the jar and then just 
use the shake to roll pre-rolls. Some places, all the pre-rolls come from another facility, so they don't do that in there. They don't do that in the store. But Colorado, for example, has a lot of small shops. Some people work in the grow. They work on the floor selling bud, and they even do the extraction. I used to shop at a place in Colorado Springs, and a lot of places were like this, where they had the grow attached to the building where they were selling it. They'd rent out two units in a plaza or something like that. One would be the storefront, one would be the grow. I used to go to this one place. I think they might have rented out three units or something, but they had their grow, their storefront, and they also did extractions all in the same place. And one guy did the growing and the extraction, and some days when they were short-staffed, he'd go work on the floor. The plants didn't always need somebody to look at them, so he could go ring up some bud. And I used to enjoy that because I'd be asking him about different stuff, and this guy saw every stage of the grow. He saw every stage of the extraction. He knew what the best stuff was in the store. So some places are a little bit more hands-on, but a lot of places, it seems like in Florida, most of the bud tenders here, they just have to worry about ringing up the sales. They get a high volume of customers. There's a lot of online orders. You get a little sheet with a few different items on it. You go pick out whatever somebody ordered. And then as soon as they come in, you give it to them. And if they're like, oh, I forgot to add some gummies, you add it on there. So for a lot of places, they're just hiring somebody that's going to give good customer service, essentially. You don't want grumpy people when you go into the dispensary. You want somebody that's gonna have a little bit of small talk with you while they're just ringing up your bud. Also, discounts. I thought the employee discount at a dispensary was gonna be better. And I'm learning that most places, the employee discount, while it's pretty good, you can usually find like a daily deal that's better. I think one of the shops that I worked at, I had an employee discount. I used it like one time. Every other time there was another deal that a customer could walk in and get that was better than my employee discount. I thought it was bullshit, but it seems like a lot of places are like that. Sometimes employees get free samples here and there at some places. Sometimes you get first pick on some things. But in a lot of cases, there's not really that much benefit to being an employee there as far as what you can purchase or what you can get a hold of. Well, I hope this video was helpful and gave you some insight on what it's like to work in a dispensary. I personally thought it was going to be a lot cooler than it was. I worked in a few different places, but not really that great. Don't forget to tune into my smoke sessions. We go live on Twitch after 9 p.m. Eastern for a smoke sesh almost every night. It's a super lit time and you're not gonna wanna miss it. And I didn't really get into it in this video, but dispensary customers are the worst. And if you wanna hear more about why I think that, check out this video right here. It talks about some common dispensary customers you see when you work in a shop. Have a lit day, my dudes.